Okay, welcome everybody. This is Reagan Archbald with your Never Stop Healing uh, podcast. And hopefully uh, you guys had a chance to look at uh, some of the things we've uh, been talking about in the Timeless Health series in our hack last night. Uh, we jumped into some some interesting things on uh, cell core, and we're going to be talking about that a little more today. We also jumped into you know, finding your most enjoyable activities. And we're talking about protein fasting. And, and that was the challenge from the week before. Last night, we got a little more esoteric and we jumped into some Chinese medical principles of, you know, Jen, uh, Shen, Jing, and Qi. And those are, that's kind of like this, this, uh, this beautiful triangle that uh, we look at. And, and it's, it's called the three treasures. But uh, Shen is the, the spirit that overrides everything in our, in our lives and in our bodies. It's the, it's the empress or emperor of your soul. And, uh, the beautiful thing about Shen is when it's, uh, nice and harmonized is that's when you feel a greater connection to the universe, to the source. And so the challenge that I gave you all is looking at detoxification, from more of a spiritual perspective of letting go of baggage from the past so that you can actually move forward because the timeless health series is that that concept of what are the things in the past that have really robbed you of your time and uh, when i say rob you of your time i mean what what's taking your energetic resources because you you have to deal with this this health condition and that could be uh, pain is the biggest one you know pain is that that it's it's that level of resistance that that kind of gets in our way of progress. Um, but the other thing that we want to look at is, is really um, capturing detoxification as a letting go so that we can move forward and propel into a new level. So, so that's where the Shen is really important because it allows you to check into your heart and into that fire element. The Jing is the destiny and Jing is, is what resides in our kidneys. But Jing, I look at that as our genetic expression. And so the more of the epigenome, and this is one reason I love the perinatal tissues from umbilical cords. My wife and I and my kids have been doing this uh, immune reset every single day, these just subcutaneous injections of a half of a cc of the, uh, the perinatal tissue. Uh, and, and what we're finding is just uh, we're at about day seven now. So you, uh, the way that it works is you do, it's 20 vials. And you do 14 days every every day in a row, and then you do every other day until it's gone, and that's a massive immune reset. But we're all on day seven. I think this morning was day eight, but we're noticing better sleep, better brain function, feeling stronger. But what the these these perinatal tissue cells do is they reset the epigenome, and so they clear it out, and so it's like it's like filling up your Jing reserves, and it's a really powerful concept. Um, and it's something that we're just starting to deploy more and more clinically because it's easy to administer, much safer, um, very fun. But, uh, but that's the Jing. And then the Qi part of it, and many of you have probably heard of Tai Chi, and, um, and maybe you've heard of uh, Qigong, and you've seen videos on it. We've done some Qigong exercises in our Health Accelerator community. But, um, but that's where you're working to cultivate and chi, the chi, which energy is, um, you know, and, and chi, they're used simultaneously. Hey, and we've got the lovely Andy Bryce on today. I'm clearly a technical wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good to have you on the show today. Thanks. And I love the backdrop. The curtain and a hotel in Vail. <laughs> oh, yeah, hotel in Vail. It's Yay. very exciting. So, uh, uh, and I guess you've heard the, my, I'm just doing a preamble of what, what we talked about last night in the, in the mm -hmm. hack. And then today we're going to take a little deeper dive, but, but Chi just to kind of finish that thought. So Chi is like that, that energetic force between matter and energy. So there's an exchange that happens. And if you have studied physics, um, you'll know that there's a, a law in physics that matter cannot be destroyed matter can only be turned into energy. And uh, so, so it's a really important concept. And that's what she really is doing is it's taking energy and you're turning it into matter. And that's, that's what really matters when it comes to health is, okay, how are we going to reset your cells so that the next version of you, the future 
that you're looking towards uh, becomes bigger and better and healthier and happier. So that's that's the goal. So today we're going to um, jump in a little deeper into how you can set the foundation. We're going to talk about foundational medicine with Cellcore, and we're going to go through each of the Cellcore steps. So is that okay, Andy? Cool. Cool. So, um, uh, and and uh, any thoughts on anything I just shared, Andy? I was kind of, uh, you know, kind of yapping on as I do. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, although I might be jumping in a little early on this with the cell core, I just really want everyone to be aware that you know sometimes the detox affects people differently. And please reach out to us if it's. You know, if it's anything you're not expecting, because we don't want you to stop the regime, we want you to communicate with us and we can help you with those dosages. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a that's a really good point because um, cell core, and it, it, as we look at it, you know, just to give you guys a, an idea of why we use cell core, because detoxification requires energy. And so this is where, you know, what Andy said is brilliant because it's like, if you're having reactions from cell core, it's just we haven't ramped up the mitochondria enough. So cell core at its, its sole purpose is to provide you with the enough energy and with the right detoxification processes so that you can do it easily. So you shouldn't be having reactions to it. Sometimes all we need to do is just slow down the process just a little bit because you don't have enough energy to clear out the toxins. And so many of my patients over the years, and I put patients on really strong detox, uh, detox protocols early in my career. And, and I realized it was like, you know, one step forward, two steps back. It was too much. Andy, have you done a detox like that where you just got your ass kicked? Oh, I did many years ago. And I actually, it was, gosh, it was before I had Jackson and he turns 20 in August. <laughs> and I had so much, I had, um, I had a lot of issues because it was too full on for where I was at at the time. Yeah. You know, I was tired. I had headaches. I had kidney pain. And yeah, I was not a happy camper at all, solely because like you said, you know, you, you need to, it needs to be relevant to where you're at. And it yes. really did kick my ass to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> to Christmas, all the way to Christmas. All the way, <laughs> clean there. <laughs> so, um, so let's, and, and as we jump in today, we're going to get a little nerdy. So as you, but if you guys have any questions on Cellcore, uh, we'll answer those, but at its core, we look at this and we call this foundational medicine because it's it's no different than if you're planting a garden. So, you know, imagine you got your garden and you're looking around and it's got all these leaves and debris on it. You're not just going to go sprinkle seeds on top of the garden and be like, OK, fingers crossed, we're going to get some amazing tomatoes and kale and chard and, and uh, peppers or you know, I'm trying to think of what we planted in our garden a couple months ago. But um, but you have to till the soil, but in order to till the soil, you have to remove the debris first. And so, um, so really, if you think about what cell core is doing is, is a lot of what we're doing is we're removing the debris. So we're getting rid of those, those twigs, those, those old leaves that haven't broken down fully. And uh, we're, we're removing that. And at the same time, we're putting in some new nutrients into the soil. So it's like taking a syringe and infusing a bunch of nitrogen in the soil. And so you have this like robust fermentation process that starts to happen. It's like putting probiotics in the soil. And, um, and that's essentially what cell core is doing. And so the, the step one is energy and drainage and there's a funnel. And so if you look at the funnel, the, it, it's actually a really critical component um, in this roadmap, because energy and drainage is really where you start to get some charged particles like the, you know, the CT minerals is what we've used in the past. And those are the little drops that you, you put in your, your water. But those CT minerals actually are part of the charged particles that give your mitochondria, mitochondria energy. The new thing that they've upgraded to is BC ATP. So that's brain carbon ATP. And these are specific chains of fulvic and humic acid. And that fulvic and humic acid is bound with specific minerals that once again, charge up the mitochondria. So, so anytime we're going through detox, just to restate the principle, 
we're adding energy into the body. And then the three core things are for leaky gut. So a lot of people don't realize this, but every single step of the four step process is there are leaky gut protocols, some of the best leaky gut protocols you could imagine. So part of the leaky gut protocol is scraping out those leaves and twigs. And that's where we use Tutka. And Tutka is an acid that is found specific in the biliary ducts. Are you familiar with the biliary ducts in the liver, Andy, or is this getting too nerdy? Look, I'm enjoying it. Um, I have a close family member with issues in okay. this exact area of her liver. So I'm really interested ah, in it from that perspective. Okay. Yeah. Does she, have, is, does she have stones or blockages in the biliary ducts? It's or? blockage and inflammation blockage and inflammation. So, and this is really common because what happens in the biliary ducts is your liver is kind of like a, a factory and it's taking hormones and nutrients and it, it has to metabolize those. So this, uh, you know, what, what we don't think about always, well, I don't, is that anything that goes into your body, it goes through uh, uh, the stomach and then in the small intestine, any active material, uh, some, some come right when you chew the food, those carbohydrates have to go get broken down, amylase breaks them down, but some proteins get denatured in the stomach and uh, a little absorption, but it's really when it hits the small intestine, it goes through the hepatic portal vein. And then anything that's bioactive has to go through the liver and the liver breaks down these parts and it says, okay, we don't need this material. This is the gold, you know, it kind of, it's like mining for gold. I guess we'll use that analogy. And that's the energy that the liver finds. And then it transports it into the blood cells and it gets to the right tissue. But the byproduct goes into those biliary ducts. Like your, uh, who is it that's got the issue? Your sister? Uh, well, no, I, I'd rather not say who's got oh, it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, uh, that's Reagan's Idaho coming out, clueless. And, uh, but, but yes, so <laughs> we'll, we'll respect Nipa. Um, I'll, I'll but, keep it in check. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> But, but really what happens is those biliary ducts have to take that material and then that's called phase one detoxification is where your body and your liver now has to take that material and create a water soluble molecule and turn it into a fat soluble so that it can get excreted into the colon and pooped out. So phase two is when it gets transported to the colon and then phase three is when we excrete it and have a bowel movement. So so, so, so does many... this does this um, tie into why people with issues with their biliary ducts, you know, depending on how far they are within these different conditions, you know, they are predisposed to a lot of bowel issues, to IBS, predisposed to to even bowel cancers and all sorts of you know like really scary things. Yeah, and if you uh, even if you look at the things where there's no symptoms. Like um, you'll start to see that liver failure and fatty liver disease is, right. uh, I mean, uh, some estimates are over 50% of people in the United States have some level of fatty liver disease, which, you know, at the end stage leads to cirrhosis of the liver. And when you have scarring of the liver, that's where those biliary ducts just get closed entirely. And so it's like, you don't, now you've, you've lost your ability to take out the garbages. And so right. uh, imagine at your hotel room there in Val, if, if uh, suddenly, you know, they could clean the room, but they couldn't take out the garbages. Well, after about three guests, um, my, you know, it would start stacking up and then yeah. it would just, the room would not be able to be utilized. And so that's what happens in our liver and our liver has got, you know, thousands of rooms in it. But when too many of those rooms start to get plugged up, then the symptoms show up. But most doctors, unfortunately, they don't do anything until the symptoms show up and then it's too late. It's like, hey, 90% of our rooms, we can't book guests in them because the garbages haven't been cleaned out. And why didn't management tell me sooner? Well, we didn't realize it because we had other rooms where we could shuffle things and that's when our labs look normal. But then all of a sudden the, the liver enzymes go through the roof and everyone's scratching their head. So, um, so yeah, it's it's uh, interesting because Lance Armstrong, his his uh, foundation did a study on this, and they found that the liver has to be almost ninety percent. Uh, those biliary ducts have to be almost ninety percent occluded before the lab markers will even show up. And probably the advantage of having the functional parameters run over you know, traditionally what we see in Western medicine have been, you know, narrower boundaries. 
that's it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because we'll look at labs and we'll say, well, hey, uh, Andy, your ALT and AST, they're trending in a in a way that we don't, you know, they're now in the 30s and they're moving towards the 40s. We've got issues, whereas in conventional medicine, it's like, well, it's it's kind of on the high side of normal, but, you know, nothing to be alarmed of. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll watch and wait. Yeah, I'd rather nip it in the bud before it's a crisis, right? You know, Absolutely. Like- yeah. Yes. So one of the best things about Cellcor is Tutka is the acid and it's a really long acid name. And so I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Um, and I could pull it up and do my best, but it would just sound ridiculous at, at best. But, um, but Tutka is the acid that exists in that biliary duct that allows for the emulsification of fats and, and specifically it activates an enzyme that takes that water soluble toxin and turns it into a fat soluble toxin so that you can excrete it. So Tutka is in almost, uh, the advanced Tutka is in almost every phase of the four, four steps in cell core. The other thing that we use in step one is the biotoxin binder. And the biotoxin binder is specific particles of humic and fulvic acid. And if you think of humic and fulvic acid, this is what you're going to find in the soil itself. And in the soil is, is where, you know, that's where the nutrients get exchanged. And if you think of the root system of plants, the plants need nutrients. And, and so plants really feed off carbons and, and our, our bodies have more carbon than any other element in the planet. And this carbon technology with the fulvic and humic acid is really powerful because what it does is it carries nutrients to your body and to your cells And then in order for that nutrient to be released for, you know, if you think, go back to chemistry, there's a pH and there's an interaction between electrons. And in order for the the nutrient to be released from the fulvic and humic acid, your body has to release a toxin in place of it. And so it binds up with a toxin and then it's already, it's ready and it's recycled and it's ready to get out. So it helps your liver detoxify in a much better way. And, and and if you think about most detoxifications, like one of the, I don't know exactly what you took when you got knocked into Christmas, um, but, <laughs> but, but um, the, the, the thing that happens is you're on long chain carbon molecules and that's like activated charcoal, uh, it can be bentonite clays, uh, that can be EDTA, it can be different binders that uh, pull out all the nutrients of your body. So not only are you in an energy crisis, the way you're feeling, but then you do a detox and you put yourself in a deeper crisis and thinking you're doing your body good. And I did the same thing when I triggered Hashimoto's, I went vegan and I did all these crazy cleanses for about two years. And I just got sicker and sicker and sicker thinking, I just need a detox. I need a detox. And I was looking for all these crazy things in my stool. Cause I'd seen all these pictures of people having these massive releases of like parasites and craziness nice but I, I i didn't and i didn't have any any noteworthy uh, things that i i excreted but i just felt sicker and sicker and so yeah. it was because i was using those long carbon chains and i made things worse so cell core is all small and median chain uh carbons and so i wish this technology existed 18 years ago when i first started my practice because right when I heard about it, and it's a newer company, it's a newer technology, but right when I heard about it, well, first it comes from Idaho. So I'm instantly, uh, I'm, I'm going to pay attention to it. But, but the second thing I was like, this is exactly what people need in their process. So this gives the foundation. So, um, right. so that's, that's, uh, cell core step one. Um, and that kind of gives people a, an understanding what, what what did I miss there, Andy? What, uh, you know, what, what questions you, do patients usually have as they start the process? It's really the questions that what I, you know, mentioned earlier was around, um, you know, the feeling of, oh, I've now got symptoms that I didn't have, you know, and I've had a couple of people say, hey, I've stopped taking it. And I'm like, oh, please, you know, so now in orientation, I'm very clear with people please communicate with us. So those are really the only questions that I've had um, from the patients that that spring to mind first off. I haven't really, um, you haven't really had any other questions that I can think of at the moment. 
And, and I think that's, uh, you know, the, the biggest thing is uh, for those of you who are starting on cell core and you're noticing symptoms, then the very first thing we need to do is, okay, we need to increase your energy. So think energy number one. And then sometimes you need to think, okay, slow down the detox process number two. And so that may be take the BC ATP and do maybe one dose of the Tudka and one dose of the biotoxin binder. So there's ways of simplifying it. Um, but, but really, as we go through, the, the, first, the first kind of foundational filter that we're looking at is on the cellular level. So when we talk about biliary ducts, there's endothelial cells, and that's where all the blood vessels are. And that's, that's actually where these charged particles reside. So it's at the cell level. And so one of the things that we love about cell core is because we're focused on the cellular detoxification and cellular communication, is it creates a nice environment where these proteins can actually be transported out of the cell so that cells can receive and, and uh, emit communication. And so with peptides, when we stack peptides on top of it, the peptides are going to have a clear pathway so that your body can actually start communicating. So uh, one of the, the big things, and people ask the question like, well, my phase one peptides don't always perfectly line up with the phase one, phase two, phase three, and cell core. And so let's answer that real quick, because that's created some confusion for, for our patients, hasn't it, Andy? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Be, and and it, we can't blame them because life, we want life to be really linear and we want everything to fit perfectly. <laughs> and so black and white is where I shine. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and sometimes there's other, there's hues of color between the black and white and there's, yeah. there's green and there's purple and there's red. And so, so what we're going to talk about is the fact that if you have peptides, and you're like, hey, I finished phase one of my peptides and I still have one week left in my step one in cell core. Don't worry about it. Just go on to your next phase of peptides and uh, keep doing the cell core because some of your peptides are going to be 21 days. Some of them may be 30 days. Some protocols like with epitalin, it can be 50 days. And so um, so don't worry, you know, and, and it's, you know, like like we're talking about in shades of color the the real goal is just to keep nice and consistent on everything and anytime i meet with patients you guys have heard my questions a million times i say on a uh, on a, a regular basis or how continuous uh, has your energy you know give me a scale of 1 to 10 on how great your energy levels have been on a continuous basis so i'm i'm looking for consistency because it's the consistency that drives the momentum of the healing and then I'll ask you, know, how's your sleep been? How's your nutrition been? How's your exercise? And we go through the core, just the core lifestyle components, but you'll start to see numbers increase and it's really powerful. Um, but the thing where it doesn't increase is when you wait 30 days until our next visit and you don't reach out to Andy or Jenny. And then you're like, well, I stopped my peptides because I needed to get caught up with cell core. And it's like, no, 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 just keep going on the path. And so- yeah, big, big, important thing there. Yeah. Um, and let me see if we, and if, if you guys have questions as we go, um, uh, uh, happy to answer those. Okay, I'm getting ready to do step one of cell core now. Should I, should I be on some peptides also? I want to get the most out of the four steps. Okay, so um, awesome, Diane, and good to have you on here. So if you are just getting started, uh, Diane, we absolutely, there's two peptides that we find are critical um, in the step one. And uh, these would be great for you, but one is the epitalin. And epitalin is a telomerase uh, enzyme. So it's a peptide that actually helps create better cell-to-cell -cell communication. And then the uh, second one is Selenc, because Selenc is a nasal spray, so it works on the GABA receptors in the brain. It's also been shown to be uh, antiviral in certain applications, um, but it's a nootropic, so it's really going to help brain health. And these two things give your body the energy that you need so that you get the most out of the detox. So, so absolutely, Diane, and, and uh, you know, just feel free to call the office and, and we're happy to get that rocking for you. Okay, so... So we hit the cells and we're in kind of step one. And, and then what we really start doing in step two is hitting the organs and the tissues. And so, um, so if you look at the funnel and actually I've got, let me pull up an image here. 
because I know we got we got a lot of us who love visuals. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so so we got the cells here, and then we go organs and tissues. And so step two is interesting because um, this is actually where parasites uh, start getting addressed and different infections. And hey, Bev, I noticed you raised your hand. Is if you have a question, plug it in. It's good to have you on. Good to see you. Um, let me jump into that. Oh, Bev. Hey, here it is, Reagan. It seems like there. It seems there is a total time frame in this process. You're right. It's a roughly a four month process, Bev. And um, yeah, awesome, awesome question. So, um, okay, so the, and I think I got all the questions. Andy, if I miss any, just let me know. Sure. Um, or Shawnee. Shawnee's on the back end, always keeps things in line. Um, so from uh, 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 cells, we go organs and tissues. So, so step two is, is really where um, we start maximizing the uh the immune system and the gut and this is a great process because not only are we you know adding in some additional binders um but we're adding in the the para one and para two and each of the para there's four paras and just because they they start with the word para does not mean parasites 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 there's there's other infections that we're clearing out and so um this is actually a really critical process because as these infections, um, as they get cleared out, then your body can actually start to heal the leaky gut. So, so if you think of the leaky gut as, um, as a garden analogy, so there's going to be like, you know, leaves and twigs, and there's going to be, a, you know, different uh, garbage and accumulation. Well, one of the things that, that accumulates is parasites and parasites can actually create leaky gut. Yeast overgrowth can create leaky gut along with uh, birth control can do it. Uh, you can have ibuprofen can cause leaky gut and then proteins like uh, Reagan, gluten. in saying birth con control can do it, is that the hormone factor? Like can HRT for women at the other end, like myself, yeah. can HRT do it as well? You know, HRT, if, if, uh, you know, the, uh, the reason why birth control does it because it binds on the thyroid gland. And so what happens is you have a diminishing effect of T3 activating the peristalsis in the gut. So, so, um, so part of it is just the constipation effect because it, it binds on the thyroid receptor. But the other thing with birth control is your liver has to metabolize that. And then those metabolites don't get fully broken down and then they end up in the gut and then it creates leaky gut. With bioidentical hormones, we don't see that. Actually, progesterone um, has been shown to be very beneficial for leaky gut. So it's actually really good for you. So um, it's different. And, and especially if you're using the bioidentical hormones. Um, but the problem is anytime you, you have too much, so. Uh, here's the caveat, and this is where biology, uh, it's not black and white ever, but here's the caveat if, if, is if you use too much progesterone, um, you can actually create a big problem because your, your liver can't process all of it. And then you end up having issues downstream where these, pro, these uh, hormones aren't fully broken down and then they end up in the gut. And too much progesterone is an individual thing and would be demonstrated in your labs. Exactly. If it's too much for you as an individual. If, if you're taking too much, just like if you take too much DHEA, especially as a woman, um, you get male pattern baldness and grow facial hair, get cystic acne. Otherwise, it's no big deal. Well, you know, I'm nearly 60. <laughs> There's a facial hair component. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so yeah. So moral of the story, don't What's take too day? much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little bit of a good thing. Uh, you know, in America, uh, we just want more. I don't know if you've noticed that about us, Andy, but we just say, well, oh. if a little bit's good. More is better, right? Look, welcome to America. I put on, what is it, in pounds? And it's nearly gone. I've got like about eight pounds left to go. But I put on like 15 or 17 pounds just living here. And You're welcome. I personally don't believe it was a hormone component for me because where I was at at the time and, you know, I'm, I'm fairly well informed on those issues. So I don't think it was that. It was just welcome to America. Let's get chubby. 
<laughs> so, and everything's big. The serves are bigger. Everything's bigger. And you don't Every, even really realize you're doing it. You, you know. So. Right. Yes. <laughs> and by the way, I found semaglutide, one of our peptides, to be really, really helpful for me as an individual. I, I you know, yeah. combined with everything else I was doing, it, it made the difference for me to really get started and back into where I wanted to be. Well, and, and I think uh, Andy brings up a good point. If you're trying to lose weight while you're, you know, if you're doing a program and one of your chief goals is if you want to lose 10 or more pounds, semaglutide is going to be in phase one. So, so Diane, this is what you want to consider. It's like, well, I also want to lose weight. Well, semaglutide might be helpful, but tell us what your experience on semaglutide, what, what's it been like for you? What have been the challenges with it? Um, what, what's helped? Sorry for me, Reagan. Yes, for you, Andy. Yeah. Um, okay. What I found, and you know, I'm very big on stressing. We're all individuals, and we all respond differently to any of the regimes we have. Um, so, for me as an individual, I found the first couple of weeks because you can get a bit headachey at whatever degree you know that you might respond, and you can have a, a little bit of nausea. Now, I have someone else who I know that. I'm quite close to who was on it. She found the nausea more of a factor. I didn't. Yeah. I had a very small amount for the first couple of weeks and I equated it to the morning sickness I had with Jackson that wasn't very, <laughs> wasn't a lot to deal with and it didn't impact my day. So I did have a little bit of nausea um, and I had a few headaches, but you know, as a health coach, we're always pushing sleep, hydration, and diet are our big changes right. we want to see in people. So, you know, I was just really aware to hydrate even more than I maybe my normal level was. And that helped me out enough. I don't like to take um, painkillers at all. Um, I have a congenit congenital kidney thing that's fine. But, you know, I'm just very aware of not wanting to put anything else into my system. So I just found staying hydrated for me was good. Yeah. And... I'm not taking it anymore, but I basically lost 10 pounds really quickly. And um, I was losing about two pounds a week. Yeah. And it, like I said, you know, making the changes of, you know, getting back into really eating clean and not just saying I was, <laughs> you know, I'm a health coach. <laughs> I know better, but, you know, we all fool ourselves right, and, yeah. you know, it's about being honest with, with yourself and making those changes. So for me, it was a really good kickstart to have that motivation to know what works for me, I you love know, that. diet and lifestyle wise. So I, I really found it a, a great, um, it's not the magic pill. Nothing is because ultimately we are our own magic pill and mm. magic wand of making yes. those health and lifestyle changes. And, you know, that's where Jenny and I help people to make those and those incremental steps that are sustainable for you as an um, individual, you know, and, and finding what works for you. Yes. Yeah. We love the 1% um, progress every day. But yeah. we do like to accelerate the and give you extra support with peptides because semaglutide, what it does is it zaps your sugar cravings, it helps reset the pancreas. So a lot of our patients have beta cells that are dying because of diabetes or or prediabetes or insulin resistance. So I just look at that as like let's uh, you let's have you use less willpower so you have more energy. <laughs> and semaglutide is like a magic for that. But if you don't put the lifestyle in, yeah. then it, will, it all comes right back. And it was like, it was not a good investment of your time or the energy in your body or your resources. So, yeah. so that's where, you know, Andy and Jenny are the linchpin because on the medical side, you know, you can get some of the best protocols and I, at East West, we're doing things that no one else is doing and we're helping people that no one else has been able to help. But in, part, the big thing that we're doing is we have people like Andy who can walk you and give you step-by-step -step programs so that you actually put this into your lifestyle, which is the biggest thing. So health independence is really what we're after. Um, and, and then we like to give people shortcuts. So, so shortcut to your health independence, yeah. nothing wrong. And it's with a that. great combination. You know, right. sometimes you need that shortcut to get going and to find out what works for you. Yeah. And that's where the cell core is, is literally a shortcut, even though you're like, oh, it's four months, Reagan, that's a long time. Do you have something that's a week? I'm like, well, well, no, how long does it take to get the soil in your garden, like ready and, and uh, get everything um, optimized so you can actually start getting 
the fruit, you know, uh, a season is about three months. And so it's a short amount of time. So, so with, with phase one, just to, you know, we'll kind of summarize, you know, we're working on the cellular level. We're using the biotoxin binder, the bowel mover, the advanced Tudka, the CT minerals, or the BCATP. And that activates the energy, but also it's a way of getting things ready for real detoxification. Um, and then in step two, this is the support. This is where we do more of the removal. So, so now that we've got your body ready, now we're going to go in and start removing some of the, the parasites. And, and I've had some interesting things that you guys have brought into the clinic in little bags. Um, I've had people bring in worms. I've had people bring in uh, gallstones. Um, interesting things. You know, you don't have to do that. Andy might prefer if you just send it to her house. Well, but uh, that actually <laughs> really interests me. So. <laughs> it is it's super interesting, yeah. isn't it? When you yeah. see that stuff come out, and you're like, "Holy cow!" You know how much energy these little guys were absorbing? Yeah wild and then even with gallstones i mean i've had patients bring in bags of them and they're like hey look what this is what came out in day 21 in my step two or you know whatever and it's it's awesome so um we had a a friend of mine who's uh, just finished his he, he had lyme disease really bad in pennsylvania and i'm gonna have him on the show but um and I don't know if you, I think Jenny was working with him. It's Larry, but um, he it looks like a new human in six months. When I first met him, I was like, you can't even finish a sentence. What is going on with you? You got the worst brain fog. I said, either you've got the worst ADD I've ever seen, or you've got a neurotoxin. And he's like, oh, I've got Lyme. Cause I was just teasing him. We we're at a conference together, a Michael Burnoff conference. And so I started, we started working with him. And um, it was step two is where he made the big breakthrough because it also helps strip those biofilms um, that, that we all accumulate and especially the biofilms that Lyme can hide under. And so, uh, so Larry did amazing on this one. And then he went through all four, four steps. But when he was out here um, just last week, I could not believe it. It was like he had uh, taken off 10 years. You know, he'd, he'd, he'd uh, reversed his aging by 10 years. He, he could talk, he was articulate, but he said step two was the big break for, breakthrough for him. Right. And so we're going to repeat that one for him. Looks like we have um, um, awesome. Yes, Bev, don't need to lose weight, just gain muscle. And, and Bev's got an inspirational quote for everyone. The only time you should ever look back is to see how far you've come. I love that. And Bev, that goes right into the gap and the gain concept. You know, we talk about that. Dan Sullivan's like, you know, we see the ideal ahead of us, but really what we want to do is look back and see how much progress, how, how far have you come, and then you can keep moving towards the ideal. So thanks, Bev. Yes. So step two is, is yes, where we introduce para one, para two. But this is also from an organ perspective, we start working on the kidneys and the liver. And it's a really important part of the phase. And then, and then you get on the VIRAD chem. And so the, this is where you get the environmental and immune support. And we're not going full into glyphosate yet, but this is where glyphosate removal starts to happen. And it's, it's really important because we're scrubbing the gut, we're supporting the microbiome and then removing the toxins as we go. So, so step two is amazing. And then, and then step three is when it's the building phase. So this is, this is where we start getting momentum for a deeper detox. And this is where we substitute uh, the para one, uh, excuse me, you stay on the para one, but we substitute para two for the para three. And para three are the drops. And they are some of the most repulsive, bitter, pungent, sour drops you're ever going to taste in your life. So did that describe it? I mean, it talk it well? up. Yeah, that's really I good. Mean, <laughs> otherwise, it's like pretty incredible to drink. It's tasty. I mean, it's, you're, when my kids see me take it, they'll, I'll be like, because <laughs> I do uh, Huang Lian and Chai Hu and Para 3 together. Um, I like mixing the Chinese herbs with this. They just work better. And holy smokes, it's um, this one gets you. It, so, so warning when you get to step three, you're going to have the. I think there's a commercial like the bitter beer face. Have you seen those commercials? 
No. Back, back during I'm a New Zealander, there's a lot of commercials. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't know. It was probably 20 years ago. I remember oh, okay. watching the Super Bowl as a kid, but they would I, I can't even remember what beer it was, but they drink one beer and they're like, Whoa, and then they drink the other beer and it's like refreshing. And I'm like, yeah, beer is kind of bitter as it is. So but anyway, para three is going to put your bitter beer to shame. Um, and it's <laughs> so so it's really good for you. But but uh, step three is an important step, too, because this is where we start working on the lymphs. And so, um, Andy, do you do any uh, lymphatic drainage, like dry brushing or have you ever I have just oh, I have just started dry brushing. I've been doing it for just over a week and I love it. I've added it to my morning ritual. Oh, nice. OK, how long? It doesn't take long. I mean, maybe oh, it takes minutes, minutes although I think I tend to do it for longer because I I really enjoy it. Yeah. I really enjoy it. And it's funny, Mike was watching me do it this morning. He's like, doesn't that hurt? Because <laughs> I'm quite good. vigorous. And I'm like, well, it's not a soft thing, but it's so invigorating. And it, I, I find every aspect of it, I really enjoy. And, oh. and on a side note, I turned 60 in November. The skin on the backs of my hands is improved. Oh, like I can't believe. Your liver is just getting healthier and healthier. Yeah, and I'm kicking goals left and right. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> man, that's impressive. And, yeah. and so, you know, part of that dry brushing that you're doing, so the lymphs is the repository for all the cellular waste. So mm -hmm. our white blood cells get made in the spleen. And so there's some immune activity too. But, but in step three, this is where the lymph activity really starts to get circulated. You're going to stay on para once. So you're still going, going to have deeper scrubbing, deeper removal. You'll be on the para three, which I've already warned you about. And then you're still going to stay on the environmental and the immune support. But it gets you ready for, um, you know, we're moving beyond the gut in step three. But it prepares us to go deeper because step four is the systemic detox. So that's everything in your body. And this is where there's any lingering everyday toxins. But the biggest thing that's important with step three is you are now removing glyphosate. And so uh, it's critical. And step three is also where you start, you use iodine. And it's a perfect ratio of iodide to iodine in there. You know, there it's it's the Lugol's, you know, Lugol's iodine has got the, the, the ratios in it that you want. But um, so it gives your thyroid a lot of energy. So uh, I, you know, we've worked with a lot of patients with thyroid issues and uh, they have a mitochondrial cell danger response. They're usually at step like stage three, but uh, by the time they're in step four, that cell danger response is like level one. And then we just get you out of the cell danger response entirely. But this is, you know, fulvic acid, uh, humic acid with iodine is just an amazing combination. And then you're going to get the, um, what uh, it's uh, the HMET. So it's uh, the environmental toxin binder. And this is the big one for removing glyphosate. And then we also put you on some inflammation control and inflammation control has wheatgrass in it. Um, so it's, it's got uh, some other properties, rosemary, um, really powerful to go deeper into the, the pathways. And uh, it's a, it's a fun one. And um, I, I, I'm trying to figure out what, I can't remember what the HM stands for. Do you know, Andy, on the HMET, it's environmental toxins. The names are ridiculous in Cellcore. And I interviewed Wes Watts and for Go Wellness, but I was like, your name's like, can you, can we come up with better names? <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, uh, but yeah, uh, HM, heavy metals there finally came to me, but HMET. So so that's the other thing that we're going deep in is the- Break, and Diane's just asking, is that part of cell core? I'm not sure what you're referring to, Diane, but the conversation is generally about cell core. Yeah, so, so step four is about cell core, the HMET yeah. binder. Um, you're going to get that in your step four, Diane, and you're going to feel amazing. So, so ideally, each one of these four steps, they go sequentially. Um, there's peptides that we're using in each of these steps. Uh, we kind of talked about the peptides for step one. For most people, it's going to be uh, epitalin and selenc. 
Um, and then we add in the semaglutide if you've got any kind of weight loss goals um, or issues with blood sugar. So, uh, but man, I love the step four because, uh, you know, glyphosate exposure was how I got into natural medicine. And uh, we did not have this type of binder. I was trying to get it out of my body with some pretty ungodly methods. Uh, you know, I was doing the, the olive oil. I drink a cup of olive oil and then I do lemon juice in it. And then I'd go for a run and uh, try to clean out my liver. And I'd fast all day before I did that. And, and it was it was interesting, but, but pretty harsh. Uh, then I would do the EDTA and then I would do the activated charcoal, bentonite clay. Um, it was just too much for my body. So, so the beautiful thing about the cell core is it's a step-by-step -step systematic way to detox your body, get your body the energy it needs and every step you just feel better and better and better. So. Did you see that question from Diane? Oh the yes. Do glyphosate question? levels show up in the blood test? I need, I need to feel better. Yes. So, so glyphosate, Bev, um, there is a test that you can do. And Stephanie Seneff out of uh, MIT, she's done the deepest work on, on glyphosate, but, but really, yes, there's a test that, that you can do. I believe it's Great Plains Laboratories. Um, we just assume everybody has glyphosate exposure because even if you're eating hundred percent organic, there is glyphosate everywhere. I mean, they've tested every uh, organic wine in California. They find high levels of glyphosate, um, you know, pretty much uh, anything uh, grown in California is going to have glyphosate. Unfortunately, it's one of the most abundant uh, like sources of minerals and on the planet is right there. Like California is just a basin of, of uh, it's just amazing potential for crops and produce and everything. And it still has massive amounts of, uh, you know, yield that comes out of California, but unfortunately they've sprayed, uh, Monsanto's has got their dirty palms and sprayed it all over California. So, um, so it's unfortunate. Yeah. But now there, I think there's 3000 lawsuits against Monsanto's uh, for Roundup claiming that it doesn't cause cancer. So there's class actions and, Hopefully they'll clean things up and we'll have a, you know, the planet is getting healthier. I know a lot of people say it's not, but in general, we're moving in the right direction. So, so it's really good news. Um, but in the meantime, we need to keep our bodies clean and that will keep you living long, healthy. And uh, you can be like Andy and just have your skin on the, the back of your hands, have a transformation. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> I think that, no, that's actually says a lot about your overall health. That's really impressive. So keep it up. Yes. Well, Andy, I appreciate you being on today. This has been fun. Uh, we'll answer one final question. Um, yes, Bev, I breathe glyphosate in my farm community. I know. And, and so do I, you know, in Midway, uh, Bev's out there in Camas. And so, so yeah, we're, we're not going to get away from it just yet. But um, there are things we can do to help keep our body resilient so that glyphosate doesn't pull us down. So um, hope you guys enjoyed this. Love you guys. Thanks for being part of our amazing community here. Um, Diane loves dry brushing, helps with cellulite control. That's awesome. So, um, so there you have it. So keep it up, everyone, and we will see you next week. Andy, any final words of wisdom? Oh, you're asking me for words of wisdom? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, well, today, my words of wisdom for me, my intent that I set for today, because I do my little morning ritual and I always just do some belly breathing and set an intent. And my intent for today was ease and flow. Wow. Well, did this conversation feel like ease and flow to you? Yes. Me, me too. So, yeah, good. Very much so. And, you know, setting that intent for the day, and being cognizantly aware of it and reflecting back, I'm like, wow, this is awesome because that's how my day went. So setting, I love setting an intention. Makes all the I difference. Love, I love that. And Bev, I appreciate the compliment. I do like this shirt. Thanks. Bev likes my shirt. My, my shirt <laughs> epitomizes ease and flow. <laughs> nice. There you go. Yeah. All right. You guys take care. We'll see you next week. And don't forget uh, the hack this week is... Think of detoxification as something that's more a spiritual process than a physical process. And so if you missed it, go back and listen to last night's hack. I think it, we went deep and it was, uh, it, it, it should be pretty impactful for you. So 
All right. See you guys. Thanks, Reagan. Bye. Thanks, Andy. Bye-bye.